Victor Wembanyama. A lot of folks were chatting a little too loud after his first outing in Summer League. Maybe he heard it, maybe he didn't, but he bounced back strong, Kendrick Perkins. Oh, absolutely he heard it. And look, he responded in great fashion. Look at the sweet stroke right there from the 15 foot. Malika knocking it down. He already could see in the rim standing away from the basket that far. Oh, look, Kevin Durant action in this game. You see it? I see you, big fella. Well, and then there's this perk. When you can get your own rebound and then dunk it, yeah, that, yeah, and I'm a little jealous that I couldn't do this in my career, but again, I wasn't 8 3, but that still was impressive. <laughs> Finishing that strong, goes up with one <laughs> hand there, finishes it with the right. Behind Victor Wembanyama perk, the Spurs clawed back into this game. Grown man moves oh. down the stretch. But look at the physicality, fighting for post position, getting it in the spots. Look, on time, on target, knocking down the trade bills, the well, trade ball. <laughs> he was feeling good clearly after that one because this one takes off of one foot, oh. couldn't quite get it to go. The Spurs, they would fall in this one to the Trailblazers. Let's take a listen to Victor Wembanyama after the game. It's just me me getting comfortable with, with myself, with my body, with the, the court because I – you know, before today, I had like uh, two practices in one game. So uh, it's just, I was just getting going. Yeah, I, I think I could have done more to, to, to help my team win this game. It is, we got to keep learning. And uh, we've been, uh, we've, we haven't been playing our best for like three quarters. But in the fourth, we were really dominating. And uh, it, it, sh it shows a real personality of a team. And uh, I think that. Personally, I'm just, you know, uh, it's normal to get to get better every game. Two days ago was my first game. I had like uh, so much going on with the draft, with the media and stuff. So I got a, so it's just, you know, it makes sense. So after his first game, Victor Wembanyama said that he really didn't feel like he knew what he was doing. But then he made up for it in game two. He posted a big double-double. He's the only Spurs player with a game of 25 points, 10 rebounds in a Southern League game since 2017. And I know this is all about Victor Wembanyama, but just real quick, I mean, shout out Michael DeVoe, man, for Portland. 20, 29 points, 5 assists, third most points by any Trailblazer in Summer League since 2017, and they got the win. He really impressed me, even with his post-game interview. But... Let's stick with Victor, the number one pick. We got to see him play twice this weekend. Perk, I'm going to start with you here. He's done. He's done for the rest of Summer League. Do you think he should have played in more games, or are you good with this? Uh, I mean, I wanted to because I don't have a damn thing to do but to watch <laughs> Summer League. And, yes, I would love to watch more Victor win beyond. But let me say this, okay? After my evaluation, Perk evaluation, is he the greatest prospect I've ever seen? Absolutely not. But is he a bust? Hell no. And if anybody can't see the potential in this 7-3 alien, they're lying to themselves or they either hating. I was very impressed with his skill set. I was uh, impressed about, you know, just him finishing around the basket, the turnarounds over both shoulders. And I was more impressed about his court vision, being able to drop those dimes, handle the rock. Now, is it things that he has to improve on? Yes. And if I was Victor, I would actually take a break, stay in San Antonio, work on my agility, work on my speed, work on my strength, be around pop, be around those legends so that I could mentally and physically prepare going into uh, next season. Yeah, and this is absolutely in line, Brian, with what we've seen from, from lottery picks, what we've seen certainly from number two, number one, and number three picks over the last couple of years. We usually see them in two games, if that, and then that's it. What do you think of this for Victor? Yeah, I think we he learned a little bit about what he needs to do. One of the things that we saw, he really wanted the ball in space, Malika, mm -hmm. and he wanted to put it on the court and create his own shot. Now, he can do that. He is um, an accomplished dribbler, but the, the level of skill and strength you have to have at this level to do that, it's, it's just more than what he's used to. And I think he learned some lessons getting his pocket picked a bunch um, when he put the ball on the floor in these couple of games. His shooting in game one was just abnormal. He's not going to shoot two of 13. Um, I think he was a little bit winded there. I don't think he was in you know, his normal game shape, which he admitted he hadn't been able to do much for three weeks. And when you watch him and he kind of looks like he's off balance a lot and falls down, 
That's who he is. He is generally a lot lighter than people who he plays against. He does get pushed around. That's his game. He's used to being off balance and stuff. So that's something that's going to stick around in the fall. But the Spurs are also going to have to learn how to use him. And it wasn't just Victor feeling his own way. You could tell the Spurs didn't exactly know where to put him to be successful. They were running plays for him like he was a wing. They were mm -hmm. bringing him from the corner to the top of the key and giving him space. So there is a learning curve on both sides here. But the performance he had last night is a type of performance I think we'll see regularly out of him during the season. I think he's going to put up points and rebounds. Whether he can affect wins and losses, that's the hard part that we're going to see him try to develop. Right. Mark, you had a front row seat. What do you think? Well, after the game, I actually talked to his uh, agent, Buna Njai, and he was telling me that, you know, yeah, Perk, you, you're right. He did hear the hating. And actually, after Friday, after he had a tough performance on Friday and he admitted to being fatigued, um, you know, and let's not forget the Britney Spears incident that took place as well. He had, and Malika, you know, because he was at your the event yesterday with the trophy for the in-season tournament. He met with Kareem. He, he, he told Buna, there's too much going on. I need to focus on basketball. I need some things canceled. So what Buna did was he, he canceled several events, several things that, you know, perhaps might even cost him some money on Saturday. And uh, basically he gave him the opportunity to just do a couple things, go to bed early, get some rest. And then I think you saw a big difference with that on Sunday. He yeah. had one game under his belt. He had some rest. And now I think the plan is for him, he's not going to go to France. He's going to go to San Antonio. He hasn't get, got his home yet, so he has to get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. And kind of just take a breather. And I, it, it, as he said, he wanted to take a break from us too. So I think he's just going to go to San Antonio and figure out, you know, how the breakfast tacos are there and, you know, other things, the prickly pear uh, non-alcoholic margaritas. And well, Perk, why are you shaking your head? <laughs> but, but because, listen, when you, when you have this much hype around you and you're the number one pick mm -hmm. and you're this hyped up yeah. as arguably the greatest prospect ever, damn it, you don't get a break. You don't get a break from the media. You don't get a chance to cancel events. That's just part of it. This is like we talk. We saw the interviews, right? And I, with you, Malika, about him talking about the pressure and yeah. he don't feel pressure. Oh, he's going to feel it now. Now that you're in the United States, you're most definitely going to feel the pressure. Well, Every single day, eyes are on you, and rightfully so, though. Yeah. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Because, again, even in his off performance, he still must see TV mm -hmm. because even watching watching him go between his legs behind the back at seven three, like with being effortless and doing it like he's been doing it since a baby, is was was a, a beautiful thing to see. Yep. But he don't get an opportunity to duck and hide. Damn it, you got to make those events because the pressure is on. Well, I will say, everything that we've seen thus far that I've seen from Victor Wimanyama has been impressive, from the way that he's handled his interviews to the way that he's gone about assimilating, uh, meeting with fans, really understanding that people are there to watch him, to take in him for the first time. I feel like Summer League is for development, right? First and foremost, even before it became a must-see TV event, before it became something that is sold out, which is an awesome thing for fans, it's about, okay, how can we prepare these players for the next step and so if the San Antonio Spurs believe that for Victor it is saying okay it's two games and we're out I don't really necessarily have a, a problem with that I guess um, let's move on from Victor though because there were some other players that were making some noise in summer league who impressed you the most Brian well, I wanted to play, you know, I thought Keontae George from the Jazz number 16 pick was interesting, but a guy that I've been watching just fascinated by his future is Imani Bates, the number second round pick, number 49 overall taken by the Cavs. I just wanted to see what he looked at. We, if you know anything about him, he was projected to be the number one pick in this draft like two, three years ago. Yeah. Obviously, his college career at Memphis and at uh, Eastern Michigan didn't play out the way he wanted. And he has been exactly the type of player that we thought he would be, which is mesmerizing at 6'9", with great scoring and leaping ability, great athleticism, who sometimes struggles within a team environment. So he's he's played pretty well for the Cavs in two games, but in one game he took 18 shots and had zero assists. You know, and then he came back yesterday and passed the ball a little bit more. So um, I, he's going to he signed to a two-way contract. I'm not expecting him to make an impact this year, but he's definitely a guy that you watch Summer League for. You want to mm. see how a player like this uh, evolves in this setting. What do you think, Park? I'm going, no, I, I'm going with Jabari Smith. 
Jabari Smith has been balling out of control. We saw his game winner in game one to beat the Portland Trail Blazers. In game two, he was phenomenal. This guy, you could tell, has been in the lab. As a guy in his rookie season, we saw them more as just a spot-up shooter. Now I'm watching them attack the glass. I'm watching them block shots. I'm watching them play more around the basket in that dunker spot area, finishing well around the basket. Also taking this game to the low block. And what he's been doing in the summer league over the last two games, we're talking about Victor Wimbiamba being shut down. The Rockets most definitely need to put him on the shelf and get him ready, ready for the regular season. I also just love when a second-year player comes back to play in summer league. Mark, who do you have your eye on? Yeah. Well, there was a JV game before Victor stepped on the court, and it was a great one. Uh, it was uh, Amen Thompson and Scoot Henderson, and they yep. were both incredible. Perhaps the two best performances we saw. Uh, Scoot looked like a man among boys. He looked like the G League Ignite got him ready. And Amen, man, it just this this is a point guard. He's like six seven point guard. He's guarding Scoot. He's He's making everybody better. And unfortunately, both these guys got hurt. And uh, Amen is done. Uh, Scoot is likely done. He may come back. And also, Asor, Amen's brother, he was yeah. supposed to play him yesterday. He's with the Pistons. But after his game yesterday, uh, the logo, Jerry West, came up to him and, and got some words of wisdom with him. So the Thompson brothers are definitely doing work in Summer League. Yeah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.